I'm going to analyze the Spike VGAs. Unlike the still image I analyzed of Jeff Keighley's Dorito Gate, I won't go into minute details. This is going to be more of a play-by-play -play where I tell you what happens and what I think is trying to be communicated to the viewer at each step. I've watched it once before without taking notes and doing it a second time at length for this breakdown. A little background though before we start. Spike TV, which originally began as TNN, was a station that aired little worth mentioning other than wrestling. Most successful of all was your standard soap opera meets wrestling tech programs like the WWE. In 2003, it changed its name to Spike TV, hot on the heels of G4 success, which launched the previous year, eager to take their shot at this gamer demographic that appeared ripe for exploitation and marketing. In an effort to appear like a hip and young network, they adopted the new name and even tried to put in a block of edgy adult animation that failed horribly. The 2012 Spike VGAs was hosted by Sam Jackson, or as some people know him, the Snakes on a Plane guy, or otherwise known as the black hit man in Pulp Fiction that says fuck a lot. Unfortunately, it's an accurate description in this case, because despite Sam Jackson's talent, that's what he's been reduced to in hosting this show. With the program being more than an hour long, I'm going to offer just my notes with the time breakdowns. These won't be full conclusions, and it'll even sound disjointed as these are little more than just spontaneous thoughts. Most of these will be just the starts of ideas you can run with, evaluate for validity in your own analysis. Opening. Promotional video from the satirist South Park. South Park crapped all over EA Sports and the larger game industry in general in the past. Video pokes fun at The Hobbit to promote their game. Stick of truth. Carmen introduces Sam Jackson. 1 minute 51 seconds. Series of quotes from Sam Jackson's movies flash on screen, most of which are violent or contain swearing. Sam Jackson appears and reads from a cue card as he celebrates how great he is. Camera cuts to shots of beautiful young people to suggest that these are the people who love video games and attend the award show. 4 minutes 50 seconds. South Park Stick of Truth trailer. Some cut scenes and some gameplay. 7 minutes 6 seconds. Norman Reedus, Steven Yeun, and Denai Guerrera uncomfortably present Best Shooter. Working off popularity of a Walking Dead TV show, cast members selected are the younger, cooler characters. Scripted dialogue explains video games train us to use guns. Carl not shown, too young to be considered cool. 8 minutes, 35 seconds. Gearbox accepts Best Shooter award for Borderlands 2. 9 minutes, 45 seconds. Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation. Has nothing to do with video games. Reads off lines with moderate snark and introduces Kojima's, I mean Joaquin Morgan's Phantom Pain. 10 minutes 51 seconds. Phantom Pain trailer. Cutscenes. Despite lack of UI, most likely features gameplay in scripted segments. 13 minutes 48 seconds. Demonstration of how little writers know of video games. Jackson tries to explain the utility of a character is to be shot in the face. He then introduces the category for best character. Assumingly meaning that these characters are being evaluated for ballistic cranial absorbency. Corrects misunderstanding. Elaborates that these are memorable characters with depth, personality, and all-around badassness. Overuse of words like badass, awesome, and other obscenities feels familiar. Followed by Master Chief Clip demonstrating he is a nominee. 15 minutes, 41 seconds. Skip oversimplifies everything to do with back-end operations of video games. Cliff Blazinski, seemingly only video game related person, is seen in Skip for a few seconds until he's killed. Bad Skip furthers the public masturbation of Sam Jackson by introducing the theme of making games better, cooler, and more badass by inserting him like a Mary Sue into video games with Sam Jackson mode. 17 minutes, 34 seconds. Sam Jackson in The Walking Dead by Telltale. 18 minutes, 18 seconds. Sam introduces music from Game of the Year nominees. Compares video games to movies. Orchestra led by Assassin's Creed 3 composer Lorne Balfe. Plays a medley of select songs from those games creating a tasteful moment. Orchestrated music and orchestra generally perceived as something for old or pretentious people. Fashion of members of the orchestra seems strange. Heavier than normal use of black for formal situations. Some fashions seem alternative. Leather and latex? Primarily female performers. Entire segment spins on its head when the little girl doing vocals for Dishonored appears to be wearing something that they picked out from Hot Topic. Motorcycle gloves? 
21 minutes, 52 seconds, Sam introduces the newest breakthrough in nerd and gamer subculture commodification. Allison Hazlip, who demonstrated she has no clue what she's talking about when it comes to things nerd. These guys have a reason to celebrate. Game of the Decade winners, Half-Life 2. I've got Dario, Chet, and Gary with me, guys. The huge <laughs> Dario, Chet, and Gary with me, guys. Gary with me, guys. Gary, 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 Gary. Introduces Zachary Levi, who she's working for in this production. Levi uses his show as a vehicle to promote his brand. Won't mention what the brand is called. It's an advertisement. Only way to render an advertisement ineffective is to ignore it. Levi demonstrates himself to be shaping up to be something of a male Felicia Day. Has had similar roles as her. Played a nerd slash gamer in a program. His was on TV. Both voiced a Fallout New Vegas companion. The exception between the two is that Day is used as a moderately attractive face for cameras. Levi is taking a step further. The humiliating act of being teabagged on last year's show must not have been effective for marketing his brand. 23 minutes, 6 seconds. Connor's video for Character of the Year award. 23 minutes, 42 seconds. Sam talks more. Explains how the VGAs felt Xbox users' input was the only one used for skit. Demonstrating a clear bias in the show's production and the kind of demographic they want to paint all gamers out to be. Further proof of exclusionary visions by media. 24 minutes, 23 seconds. Trailer for Last of Us introduced. Gustavo Santolaya playing a small piece from the game. 25 minutes, 17 seconds. Last of Us trailer, mostly cutscenes. Very few instances of gameplay, apparently heavily scripted. 27 minutes and one second. Jack Osborne of reality show fame, The Osbournes, nothing to do with video games, introduces new Castlevania trailer. 27 minutes, 25 seconds. Castlevania 2 Lord of Shadow trailer appears to be all cutscenes. 29 minutes, 6 seconds. Sam Jackson mode in Halo 4. 31 minutes, 9 seconds. Claptrap character of the year video. 32 minutes, 12 seconds. Jessica Alba airily tries to prove she's somehow related to video games. Introduces Dark Souls 2 trailer. 33 minutes, 7 seconds. Dark Souls 2 trailer. All cutscenes. 35 minutes, 12 seconds. Alba introduces best action adventure game. Dishonored wins. 38 minutes, 0 seconds. Jackson plugs the double screen experience that's part of Levi's brand. A slip talks to someone from game trailers and an editor from Kotaku about the world premieres. 39 minutes, 13 seconds. Character of the year video for Mendez, I think. From Call of Duty Black Ops 2. 40 minutes, 0 seconds. Jackson talks about war sim games. Gives a sober thanks to the troops actually at war. Introduces Lincoln Park because they apparently had a song in Medal of Honor Warfighter. 40 minutes, 25 seconds. Lincoln Park performs Castle of Glass from said game. 44 minutes, 0 seconds. Jackson introduces the Best Independent Game Award. 45 minutes, 37 seconds. Journey wins Best Independent Game of the Year. It is worth mentioning that of all four games up for nomination, Journey was the only one working under a contract with Sony. That game company likely received comparatively large financial backing as a result. 46 minutes, 50 seconds. Sam Jackson mode in Angry Birds. No comment necessary. 47 minutes, 40 seconds. Car commercial product placement. Car can also be downloaded in Gran Turismo 5. 49 minutes, 30 seconds. Marlon Wayans attempts to be funny while plugging an upcoming movie. Introduces Snoop Dogg. I mean, Snoop Lion. I don't think I need to go into detail about how he's become the media agreed upon rapper that they like to plaster everywhere. 51 minutes, 36 seconds. After promoting his career change, dubs himself the king of reggae. Then plugs Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Introduces Assassin's Creed 3, Tyranny of King Washington. 52 minutes, 11 seconds. Assassin's Creed 3, The Tyranny of King Washington teaser. Not a trailer as it shows no gameplay or cutscenes. 54 minutes, 0 seconds. Character of the year clip for Commander Shepard. Not so much a video as it is a commercial promoting Mass Effect 3's online multiplayer. Online multiplayer of Mass Effect 3 allows consumer to buy items with real money to expedite unlock process. 54 minutes, 40 seconds. Levi appears, calls everyone nerds repeatedly. Repetition aids in conditioned behavior. Continues to try and promote commodification. Introduces Gears of War judgment. 56 minutes, 7 seconds. Gears of War trailer shows cutscenes. No gameplay. An alerting sound is played in the trailer. Sounds like a heavy horn. 
This audio cue has become recently popular. Appeals to the reptilian brain as a way to alert viewers. 57 minutes, 31 seconds. Kojima looks confused as they mention his name. He probably does not know what they are saying. Camera flanks him from the left. 58 minutes, 7 seconds. Sam Jackson mode in Dishonored. 59 minutes, 15 seconds. Camilla Luddington, new voice of Lara Croft, comes out and talks about how there weren't many female role models in video games. Most likely damage control over the alleged sexism in recent press. Ludington is wearing the weird shiny black fashion the orchestra was wearing previously. Might be to try and put an edge to her foreign accent in case people feel it's old world like orchestrated music is. Might be reading too into it. 60 minutes, 0 seconds. Tomb Raider Survivor Trailer accompanied by Orchestra. Orchestra is dressed in black again. At least some female performers aren't wearing typical former clothes as expected of an orchestra. Trailer is mostly cutscenes. Some parts appear to be gameplay but look scripted. 63 minutes, 0 seconds. Claptrap wins character of the year. No further comment needed. 65 minutes, 0 seconds. Sam Jackson mode, Minecraft. Doesn't use Notch's ugly player models. Miner is dressed like Bob but doesn't have his stubble. Also speaks with a lisp, possibly gay. Displays positive demeanor, presents himself opposite the swearing, violent edginess Jackson and video games are being portrayed as. VGA is surprisingly aware that people are sick of Gungam style. 66 minutes, 0 seconds. Jack Black comes out in a pseudo trench coat and Kyle Gass appears to have just gotten out of bed. They present Game of the Decade. 69 minutes, 0 seconds. Half-Life 2 wins Game of Decade. The award was probably made up to give further credentials to the program after the utter debacle of last year. 70 minutes, 0 seconds. Johnny Galecki introduces the first in episodic DLC for Halo 4. Appears nervous. Possible start of trend to rebrand DLC as episodes. This started most notably with Half-Life, maybe earlier. Likely taking cues from the success of The Walking Dead by Telltale. Need to follow future marketing of DLC to see if this becomes a pattern. 71 minutes, 0 seconds. Trailer for Spartan Ops DLC, cutscenes, no gameplay. 72 minutes, 0 seconds. Ken Levine comes out to promote Bioshock Infinite. Also seems slightly nervous. He presents it as if it was a game pitch for backing or to press. Probably not used to live audiences. Over emphatic smile when he finishes talking. Shows signs of relief, it's over. 73 minutes, 0 seconds. Bioshock Infinite trailer. Mostly gameplay, moderately scripted for mostly the use of DeWitt's rail riding apparatus and the introduction of the handyman. 75 minutes, 30 seconds. Sam Jackson mode in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. 76 minutes, 12 seconds. Zoe Zaldana introduces Game of the Year. 77 minutes, 0 seconds. Walking Dead wins Game of the Year. Announcer shares that Telltale also won Studio of the Year. What other awards were rewarded but not mentioned? 79 minutes, Tenacious D plays a song talking about themselves. 84 minutes, 0 seconds. Program, end. So what do we take away from all this? It's commodification of a subculture. A number of people in media, broadcasting, and advertising have made the simple connection of video games are played by young people. So this must be something we treat like other programs for young people. And in that vein of thinking, follow through by targeting the insecurity of youth. Are we pretty or handsome enough? Am I cool or seen as a likable person? As a young person, you want to be desired. You want to demonstrate you're a poignant, unique individual that people will like. The need to be validated by others is something typically abandoned by someone as they get older. In aging, we come to understand our insignificance and the folly of our pride. The Spike VGAs is an advertisement, and like most of the effective advertisements, it preys on a person's insecurity to strike them at the core of our more animal nature. Video games themselves empower the individual and allow for fantasy fulfillment of many kinds. And this advertisement is trying to keep in step with it to effectively rebrand not only what a gamer is, but what's acceptable on multiple levels. I was disappointed when a number of users tried to rationalize they were watching it for the trailers. Some even went as far as to say, but Dark Souls 2! You didn't know it would be Dark Souls 2. All you knew was that it would be teased to be something big, and in allowing yourself to be emotionally manipulated, you were swept up into the excitement. You might have watched it or spoke about it, and in the process, supported it. 
there was no shortage of reporters and bloggers that were dying to pass word to the rest of the world outside that overproduced circus. It only takes one person to communicate an idea, and the internet can take that single idea unimaginably farther. I didn't watch it until much later, and I was still able to hear all about the only thing worthwhile, the trailers, and even see those I was interested in. As I said before, the only way to combat an advertisement is to completely ignore it. Even talking about it and giving it negative attention can help it. I know I'm doing that now, but I think it's probably been long enough since that it's out of people's systems. Don't stop asking why, don't stop thinking critically, and be wary of the influence of your own emotions. Until next time.